Welcome to Extension Connection. I'm your host, Jerry Buck, and on today's show, we'll be talking to Extension educators who work on the edges of Clark County. The Southern Clark County Extension educator, Deb Markison, and Carol Bishop, the Northeast Clark County Extension educator, both will be here to talk with me in the next half an hour. And first, Debbie Markison, our newest faculty member and, frankly, the newest office uh, in Clark County. You are now responsible, Debbie, for Southern Clark County. Yep, that is correct. The Southern Clark County area of, of Searchlight, from Searchlight, Cal Navari, all the way to Laughlin, right on the edge of our state there, right this on the border. Is kind of a first for Cooperative Extension to have a faculty member in residence in Laughlin. Uh, I suspect you're seeing that community from a whole different view than, uh, than we have in the past. Yeah, in the past, uh, Cooperative Extension has been there, I'm sure as you know, um, sporadically having a, a class here or there or doing some outreach. But now with having a, um, me there permanently, and being a resident in the, of that area, I know the needs, I understand the needs. It's a very rural area. We're about 90 miles um, from Las Vegas. And yes. so in Searchlight, Cal Navari are very small communities. Um, and Laughlin is the biggest one out of the three. Uh, within the Southern Clark, Air, Clark County area, there's not, 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 about 9,000 residents, but majority of those residents live in Laughlin. Right in Laughlin. And it's a retirement area. Um, average age is 55 years old. Uh, majority of our senior citizens who are you know in, the, in their second part of life and just living right there on the Colorado River and and so there's a lot of different um, aspects of living there um, one is the uh, environment it's very hot down there and oh, so yeah. well, you know you didn't have to get used to that though you've been in this community for quite some time right I've been out there about 12 years so yes I'm so used hot to, summers not hot summers is not new to me it is new to people coming in from um, if they're retiring to that area in it's an unusual area too because we're a tri-state we have uh, Laughlin Nevada then across the Colorado River, you have Bullhead Bull City, City, Arizona, yes. and then you have Needles, which is down the road. So you have um, um, Laughlin in Southern Clark County is about 9,000 people, but across the river, you have about 30,000 people. So, and a lot of those people... So you have to consider come, the whole Yeah, area. a lot of those people work on the Nevada side because that's one of the major um, employment industries. is industries. There is the casinos where, right there on the Colorado River. There's about 10 casinos there. Sure. And so that's the major um, employment. Did you, when you first started working as Cooperative Extensions representative and faculty member down there, uh, even though you had a 12-year history, th there was this need, I suspect, to get that needs assessment accomplished, to sort of decide where your programs are going to go and, and what kind of needs do you need to focus on. Uh, did you find that challenging to, to put a needs assessment together and, and come up with those answers? Even though I've been out in that area for 12 years, um, it is it, you know a different community as far as with with the uh, age of your population. So yeah, getting the needs assessment was essential to really understanding um, what I believe what the needs were, and then getting the needs out the assessment done to see if those were you know relevant to what I was thinking. Some of it was, some of it wasn't. You bet. Uh, the needs assessment pretty much came back um, with a big uh, issue in seniors. Uh, people because that's most of our population so um, understanding how to you know live life as a senior citizen to be healthy, healthy and independent. independent to remain um, to remain independent to, to really get that um, healthy active life so that you can live your you know retirement years and enjoy it <laughs> well I know there are there are some big issues that are coming for the Laughlin area. There's some great economic opportunities that are that are developing there. I heard you the, uh, a bridge to between Bullhead City and right. and Laughlin has been uh, has been decided on. We know where it's going to be and how it's going to benefit those communities. But the programming that you're involved with, I know in part is going to be based on what you learn from that needs assessment. What's most important right. to the people who live there. In the meantime, you also began dealing with some horticultural issues, uh, and it, it just kind of hit the ground running right. on on bringing that kind of information to people. Um, Master Gardeners um, is is one of our core programs throughout Cooperative Extension throughout the state. So um, we've had Master Gardeners sporadically before we had an extension educator there, you know, with Arizona um, and a few people in Laughlin, but we never actually had a class in Laughlin. So we have 
started the Master Gardeners program. Um, the class is going on right now. Uh, we got a good response. And with that Master Gardeners program, we're going to take it even further and, and develop a community garden because in Laughlin, we're not a big horticulture area. That's on the Arizona side, down closer to the Needles, uh, California border. So people do not have access to fresh fruits and vegetables, and, that's a, and, and people are excited about this. So getting the Master Gardeners program going is going to carry into getting this community garden, which will benefit everybody in that area. We have a clip uh, about that whole yes. new endeavor to get a new garden started in the Master Gardener program going. Uh, I hope we'll be able to show that here in a, in a few seconds. That'll be great. Yes. Hi, my name is Debbie Markison, Extension Educator for University of Nevada Cooperative Extension. I'm standing here in Mountain View Park in Laughlin, Nevada, where Cooperative Extension is going to be building a community garden to benefit the citizens in Southern Clark County. This garden will also be the teaching resource area for our master gardeners who are in the process of being trained right now so that they can help our citizens in Southern Clark County learn about gardening. Here is the location for the community garden that is located at Mountain View Park here in Laughlin. The goal is to, we're going to use this quarter acre lot that's directly behind me, and our community garden is going to have raised garden beds, which will uh, allow our community members to kind of have their own garden plot, and they can grow fruits and vegetables. And then we're also um, going to have a community garden, raised garden bed, so that we can grow our own. Uh, vegetables and fruits to give back to the community. So our goal is to have some raised garden beds, um, some sitting areas, some, uh, of course, we'll have some storage, and so we'll also have a community bulletin board that'll give you tips on gardening. And so the goal is to hopefully start within the fall planning season to really get going in the spring to really have this garden take off and get the community involved. Hi, my name's Debbie. And I'm a Master Gardener trainee at the very first class here in Laughlin um, by video conference. And it's our first day, and I'm very excited about it. And I'm looking forward to volunteering. I understand that Laughlin is considering a community garden. Um, I'd really like to work with kids, and I love uh, vegetable gardening, and I'm excited about the long growing season here. And finding out what will grow and uh, hi I'm uh, Ken Cooper and I um, I've decided to take the master gardening program because I want to learn how to grow stuff in the desert um, I grew up on a farm on it in in southern Virginia and uh, when we could look at the soil and <laughs> and it was black and brown <laughs> and you knew you had soil here it's a little different on it um, this looks like a good program. I'm looking forward to the volunteer part of it on it. Um, I'm not sure what we'll be doing, but I'm really looking forward to that. So. Hi, I'm Bill, uh, Master Gardener from the Bullhead City side of Arizona through the Cooperative Extension of the University of Arizona, Mojave County. And I'm uh, participating in this class as, a, um, as an instructor at the end of the course for irrigation and one of the other um, topics. It's really exciting to see that we have a new Master Gardener program starting and you can kind of sense the energy amongst the folks who are learning about it. I will admit though, when you look across that new quarter acre that's going to become a beautiful green and growing uh, demonstration garden, it, it, it looks like it's going to be a challenge to get that accomplished. And I'm, I'm sure you and the Master Gardeners are up to that. Yes, we are. The, uh, the needs assessment, let me take you back there. We just have a few minutes left. What were, what were some of the other major issues that the people identified that we might be of some help with? Well, other than the, the senior issues we've already discussed, um, the renewable energy, which is kind of new throughout the country right now. People yes. are interested in commercially and, and what they can do within their homes. And then also community development, uh, jobs, uh, job trainings, things, skills that they need to you know, grow the area. Uh, Laughlin is a small town, but with a lot of things that are coming about in this next year, the town's going to grow. Uh, Laughlin is looking to become a city. And also we have a, a commercial solar plant that's going to possibly get in there. So that's bringing more people and more jobs to the area. So everybody's on board of, you know, the community development. So what can we do is really help our help our young people 
to get the you know get some skills necessary or information on how to better themselves to be prepared for jobs and also you know just help our businesses and you know entrepreneur programs things like that that we can help with our area to, to help it grow it sounds like you're going to have a, a, a big plate uh, that you're going to have lots of program opportunities on and I suspect uh, you're going to be connecting with this, the specialists here in the Clark County office and at the university to assist in bringing some of that expertise. I know you work closely with Buddy Borden, uh, one of our economic development specialists, and lots of new new challenges for that community. That could become quite an activity center in the Laughlin area. Yeah, I think it's a very exciting for Clark County in, in general. I'm the extension educator there, but I, I do uh, use those specialists, you know, buddy from the economic development. We have health and nutrition specialists, um, you know, so horticulture, agriculture specialists that are really going to help us with that area. So it's not just me, it's Cooperative Extension as a whole that's going to help build, build that Southern Clark County area. Debbie, we are so pleased that you are in Southern Clark County, that you're living and working out of Laughlin. We have see lots of real possibilities for you and the program there. And thank you very right. kindly thank for you. talking with me today. And thank you, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Extension Connection. I'm your host, Jerry Buck, and I'm here now with Carol Bishop, who is our Extension Educator from Northern Clark County, works out of the Logandale area, and has been with us since July of 2009. Fairly new in the job, really, uh, and having a chance to work from within that community. You are resident at uh, in Logandale? In Overton, yes. Yeah, in Overton, yes. <laughs> And uh, and where what is your background, Carol? Where did you what got you started thinking about cooperative extension as a career? Um, well, I'm a UNR graduate, and while I was doing my master's work under one of the professors there, I got a chance to be out and do some extension work, and I just absolutely loved it because it's an opportunity to really help people on the ground, and and I just loved it, and I said I need to do this. Yes. And you are, you are now uh, in charge of the extension educator for that northern component of the county. Uh, what, is the, what are sort of the geographic boundaries of where you, of where you really work? Um, my area is comprised of the Moapa Valley, which is Logandale, Overton, and also Moapa Town, as well as the Moapa Paiute Reservation, and then everything east of there, which comprises Mesquite and Bunkerville. So and all really those quite areas. a few small communities I suspect each with its own personality and they are they're they're while they're similar in some ways some of them some of them are very different um, the Wapa Valley has a very rural feel to it um, and Mesquite is more of a is a I, I refer to it as a little mini Palm Springs uh, really? sort of a yeah. resort yeah. feel so well, was it uh, w northern part of the county was at one time sort of becoming a bedroom community to to the Las Vegas Valley. Uh, I imagine that's changing a little these days. It has. Um, it, there was um, some developments that were starting there when um, Vegas was booming a few years back, and with the economy uh, slipping, that's ki we've kind of that's died down, and so now um, we're kind of reverting back to our agricultural roots. Yes. Which brings me to the question of assessing needs. You know things are changing fast, and you you can just see it that yes. the change is occurring. But to really quantify those changes and know where to put your energy as a representative of the university and an educator, uh, how did you go about identifying the knowledge needs of people in those communities? Well, we we did a needs assessment, and what I, I did is I uh, we mailed out a needs assessment to every other post postal. Uh, box in the whole area so that we got quite a quite a good sampling and people said that out of the I identified major needs as those were 40 percent or more of the people said that yes this is a large it's problem a really important issue and of those there were 11 issues that people said were large problems and of those nine were job or employment related so really? Yeah, so, so it's all about jobs there too. Jobs and employment, 
and and and, pro and and economic factors yeah is uh, is the the housing industry the that sort of thing is that pretty slow in that part of the world too uh, those kind of jobs are probably pretty hard to come by these yes days. there's there's not a whole lot of construction and building going on and so I thought how can I how can I assist this community where because it's it's really about having jobs and um, you can be a pres I, I thought first that I would take um, a job preparation type of stance and and I did also a youth survey because a lot of the the respondents to my survey were adults without children under 18 in the home so I also did a youth survey to see where where they were at did you go into the school I, I, I did I did my and uh, Moapa Valley High School was, was uh, very gracious in that Mr. Cooper there let me come in and survey his whole senior government classes. Oh, is that right? And so that was very exciting. So they got to do the needs assessment with you in class as part of their classroom activities. That's correct. And um, as one, uh, one young lady put it very succinctly to me, she says, well, we can be as prepared as we want for a job, but there's, if there's no jobs to be had, then what good does job preparation do us? So I had to kind of take a little different step back and, and, and assess what really could I, could I do in an edu from an educational standpoint that would assist this, these communities where, where there's really not the employment that they would like to have, as is everywhere in Nevada, especially here in Southern well, how Nevada. Are you, how are you going to affect this issue then? Well, um, the thing that I, we, we having the agricultural base and there's no jobs, so then what we need to do is really people need to create their own jobs. And so I thought, okay, small business is, is the most uh, easy, easy route to take or, or probably that way you're creating your own job. You don't have to rely on somebody else for employment. But then again, there's a lot of difficulty for people that have possibly never been an entrepreneur. They're there's, like, they there's don't a lot know. Of risk in, there's a lot of risk. Starting your own business. There's a lot of uh, just un knowledge that you don't have with regard to what kind of licensing do I need? What what do I do for a business plan? What's the feasibility of me being able to succeed at this business and, and make a turn a profit? So, did you build a, a curriculum? For, to answer, help kids answer those questions, or is this only for kids, or is this well, for no, adults this, too? What, is, um, what I did is I, I partnered with the Moapa Valley Chamber of Commerce, and we got a grant through the USDA uh, Rural Business Enterprise Grant, and we're creating a small business help center so that people can come Very in and actually talk to somebody and help that will help them through the licensing and, and all the sort of the hoops that you need to jump through to start a small business and I'll be providing education as far as uh, creating a business plan and analyzing the uh, strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats to a possible business helping them do enterprise budgets to see if yes if this is really a, a viable business and if they can make some money at that so that's that's one way that now this one this business or this program for business is just starting is that yes, correct? That's correct this one's just about to to uh, take its maiden voyage here as I understand yes. with in, in October hopefully with the as long as the federal government continues to function yes <laughs> well, the grant money is, is available for yes you. that's uh, true I understand well it's uh, certainly a, it, it sounds like it has real potential to help people see uh, the opportunities that they might make for themselves in new businesses uh, was that the only other issue you found in your needs assessment? Well, jobs is the big one. So I've kind of taken it from both stance, for both traditional business to see if, uh, because one of the things that people were concerned about is the high cost of goods and services and the non-availability of goods and services in, in our more rural area. Because having sure. to drive to either uh, Las Vegas or to St. George's, it's about an hour drive either way. So. It, it, not having things locally so I thought having the small businesses that serve would serve help increase that now but we're traditionally an agricultural community right so and I thought that there's a lot of opportunity there for agritourism and other things and there's a new uh, bill before the uh, county commissioners to help expand uh, 
the availability of having farm stands locally and kind of a loosening of regulations. You mean selling uh, produce, that so sort the of thing people along that, the roadsides? Yes, yeah, so that people that grow produce and other things would be able to have a little roadside farm stand. Sure, that could be one of those new businesses. Uh, right, and with the uh, accent on local foods, people wanting to eat health more healthily and buy no buy something from a farmer that they know, there's an opportunity for expansion there. Well, actually, your office, if, as I understand it, was at one time uh, the office uh, headquarters of a research station, agricultural research station, where I, I believe th they were identifying what grows best in this valley. They did. It's an ag experiment station in that location since 19... Uh, 62 approximately, but there has been since 1905 agricultural experiment stations down in southern Nevada. Oh, that is and, amazing. Yes, yeah, so we have a long history of uh, trying out different varieties, and that's one of the things I'm also interested in doing is re kind of revitalizing that efforts, because we have a lot of opportunity uh, with some of the things that we grow in our southern Nevada area that are specific, that don't like grow the well. The pomegranate. And we have a, a wonderful pomegranate festival that occurs out in our area on the 4th and 5th. And that's one of the things, we have some trees on our property that have been in since 1968. And I like to expand that to try some different varieties and see which could do well and, and, and perform best. I would imagine there are great archives of old research done species and varieties that have been tested by people that are long gone probably uh, yes. that did wonderful work we just need to dig all that out and dust it off because what yes. grew will grow I, yes. I suspect is true well that could be very exciting uh, I've been on your on your site and you also have a great learning center there with uh, com interactive video and pretty high-tech uh, an office for the public's use we do. We have um, three different interactive video uh, sites. We have three buildings. We have the old building, which is an old house that used to yes. ho be the home of the extension educator. We also have another small little, small little house on the property. And then we have our new classroom B, which is just the leader in technology. We have interactive video. We have overhead projectors. And uh, it's a very exciting uh, very exciting facility. It is really a, a wonderful place for people to come and to learn and I, I like the energy that you bring to that office and, and your willingness to help people. Um, I know you have and I, I want to give you a chance to talk about these. You've got the, the beginning farmer and rancher program that you were you were starting to talk about to kind of help people start out with small acreage production. Is that the idea? That's correct and that's not just my program. That is a statewide grant that we receive, oh, that yes. myself and other extension educators throughout the state have received, and is to help people that are already farming, and they consider anybody that's been farming or ranching for less than 10 years a beginning farmer, and also for people that are considering it. And you think farmer, you think these large end, but they only have, to be considered a farmer, they only have to have a thousand dollars worth of agricultural sales during the year. So that that encompasses all the small people that in Vegas that are growing in their backyard and taking their produce to the farmers market. That's only less than a hundred dollars a month in in ag sales. So, and it's I not am all that hard to become a, a beginning farmer. No, it's not. And um, I am the representative for all of Clark County, for Lincoln County, and also for Southern Nye County. So I'm excited about that. We, and th this is an opportunity to help those people um, develop their business, help them with their production, and help them with their marketing. It's kind of a three-legged stool. Again, bringing in those specialists, I suspect, as you, as you need yes. them. And with your own uh, economic background, uh, I'm, I'm sure you can give people face-to-face, one-on-one help. Right uh, I'll be probably handling a large part of the business sector, yes. but I, I'm not as familiar with the production, but we have experts that uh, will be helping with that. And also, this, this program is going to involve one-on-one -on -one mentors to where we actually help the people through each step of the process, through anything that they're having trouble with, they'll have somebody that they can go to and say, this is an issue, what do I do? That is excellent, excellent. Um, I've, we've only got about a minute left, but I want to ask you about the nutrition programming that, that you're doing that ah. came out of your needs assessment. Yes. Um, the, other, the other need that was identified um, 
was that obesity is considered a large problem by the people in our area. And so what I've done is I've taken and I've directed uh, my staff, I have three staff besides myself in the office, and directed them to uh, for programming towards that. Lori Lees, our 4-H person, is going to be starting a health and nutrition from the garden program to get kids eating healthier because kids that grow vegetables eat vegetables. Um, Penny Blair, who's our health and nutrition person, is adding a fitness component. She's going to be teaching Zumba, which is the latest yes. curtain greatest fitness program well, and you, there's um, a lot going on in health and, and fitness and nutrition and farming and I want to thank you for being here I'm sorry that we ran out of time I'll have to have you come back and we'll we'll talk some more and until we do thank you for watching I'm Jerry Buck